What's happening? Welcome back. You know the deal, Monkey Mike, Monkey Wrenching, and today we are on day two of the install of the rear finish panel on the Miata. Yesterday I definitely had some issues. I uh, broke a bolt and I couldn't get the bracket to bend in the proper spot without, you know, mahawing and guessing and wondering where I'm drilling the holes at. Well, I can tell you confidently today I got that figured out and it was without reply from anyone or any help. Um, I just kind of figured it out, I guess. So I'm going to show you how I figured it out and the easiest way to make this happen without just drilling randomly into your car. Um, I'll show you some uh, pictures the LRB Speed sent to me after I'd figured it out, which thank you very much to them for getting back to me. I believe her name was Rebecca. I'm really bad with names. <clears throat> um, thank you, Rebecca, for getting back to me and very thoroughly as well. Um, I want to make sure that yesterday's video, I was a little grumpy yesterday. Today's video hopefully will be a little bit more enlightening and positive and I can show you the finished outcome without being so utterly grumpy. Uh, because I did figure it out and they are sending me a bolt, the, the screw that I broke, she got it sent out right away. So thank you again very much. The, the customer service from this company seems great. I was a little frustrated because I bought it off of eBay and then shortly, I don't know, maybe a week later, I found them on Instagram from other people. I didn't, I didn't look myself. I just didn't think about it. And, and then I came across their website where the price of the product I bought was way cheaper. And then like, I don't know, a week later, it was 30% or up to 30% off, you know, products on their website. So I was just like, man, I felt like I really overpaid for this, but that's my bad for not doing my due diligence, looking up there, the products and the website and things like that, going off eBay. Yes, there's eBay charges. I understand all that stuff because I am a buyer and seller on, on eBay as well. So with that said, let's get back into this here and I'm gonna show you how to bend that bracket properly. All right, I hope that's enough light and I've got you in a good frame. As you can see, I definitely got that side on yesterday. It was pretty much a giant pain in the butt, not gonna lie. Um, I'm not sure what size this Allen screw is, and I feel like I'm gonna regret taking this off just to show you guys, because I got it all nice and set up, but I wanted to give you the best instructional I possibly could. So give me a sec while I get these loosened and pulled out. You know what, actually, we're just gonna do it on this side here. Cause I don't wanna do that. <laughs> that took too long. All right, so we're gonna take our first piece here. We're gonna add one of our clips. This is gonna go, now they go on the, the inside. So this little nipple here is gonna face the inside. This one here goes on the top. I'm just gonna snap right in there. There we go. And make sure that it clears the little metal lip. You don't want to have anything start cross-threading your bolts. That was something I did also run into, which is fine, but I mean, it is kind of frustrating. You see right there? See that piece of metal that's hanging out? Yeah. Jen, I don't, I don't like just, you know, immediately dogging a company saying, hey, come on, man, you guys didn't drill the dang hole big enough, but at the same time, yeah, they didn't really drill the hole big enough, but that's okay. I can get this figured out myself. We don't need help from them to, to do this. So now we're going to take the smallest screw, a washer, and that's going to go in here. And then the one hole that we already have, we're going to take another washer another M5 nut. We're going to put it in this little hole right here. And what I used is this here, which is an H4, an H4 and an eight millimeter nut driver. Okay. Just get it tight enough to move it in there. Don't, don't tighten it all the way. We'll do that later. Okay. Now, as far as LRB speed was concerned, they were basically saying that, and see how this moves up and down. Okay. That's another thing too, is it? This isn't exactly where we want it to be. Uh, move it as high, see that hole just moves around a lot. 
So what I did was I took the little indentation and lined it up with this right here the best I could. So move, maneuver it down, there we go. I basically just tried to make the space even with my finger here and my finger here. Okay, and you can see where you could tap that there. Rather, what I did was took the spacer, put it behind the bracket, which is gonna start to bend it out, and that's fine. Okay, and then I manually bent this to form this into place so that it would fit. So grab that, bend that up a bit, bend this out, and there. Now you see that fits into place. The bracket is now pre-bent, has a little bit, and I'll show you, but it kind of waves down and out. All right, and that's good. We can do that. Now the other issue is that we have the same problem down here, okay? And this bracket is going to also bend. So we do the same thing where we take this sucker down here, and what I did on the other side was I put it kind of midway, and that allowed the bracket to move back and forth. All right, then we're just gonna take something that could be used as a tap. I just use this because it's got a really, really fine point on it. Stick it the best I could of what I think is the middle. Now, you can see it didn't, it's not lined up properly, so let's fix the orientation of the bracket, because otherwise everything else is not gonna line up either. Again, I just use my finger make sure it's about the same distance for each finger. I know that's not like super scientific, but it, it'll work, trust me. And then we wanna stick this in the center of the hole the best we can. Hold it in place, take something. That's all you need. It's just enough to put a little dot on the other side. Again, we'll do this one here. So we'll take this and we just move it downward and I know you can't see it so let me get you a close up there's that little pilot dot and the other one right here a little red probably the only good about painting over the old body paint now I'm just gonna take that drill Take this drill with a taper bit there, and I'm just gonna use the the top piece. On our pilot hole, don't push too hard on this because, like, I did actually push in some of the sheet metal a little bit. We want to be careful not to do that because it will cause warping. There you go. That's that. So now we can take this bracket, move it back up, and we'll find. With the last two that we have, let's get some washers on them. Now with that in place, normally we would take this last bracket, which I've already gotten ready here. We would attach it, which this little hole right there, you see that little hole right there? We need to knock that out. It really is that easy. Just whatever you got handy that you can beat it with. And there it is. So normally, this, and this long one, it would go something like that. For the sake of finishing this video, I'm actually gonna use vice grips on the back side of that bolt right there, just to hold it in place. All right, that'll work. So at the moment though, and you can see how that one kind of contoured into shape. Let's see if I can get you a good shot of it. This one here, see you go like that. So that one there also kind of waved in and that's what these little slits are for, which is fine. But we have to manually bend this one and that's a little frustrating, but okay. This, this is a DIY type of thing. This isn't, you buy it and it fits up directly, hence why we have to drill some holes. And uh, I, I, I understand 100% why we need to do it this way. That, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, why do we have extras? That's weird. I don't believe there's supposed to be extras.
Okay, so back to what we were saying here. You know, after going through and reading all this, I feel like they gave us some extra spacers. The two outer three quarter inch spacer. Oh, the four inner. Oh, these ones here actually use these spacers. See, now I didn't use those on the last ones. So this is something that we're learning together. All right, this is why you read the directions all the way. Okay, so I didn't use that on these ones on the other side, which would explain why I'm having the fitment issue that I'm having. Well, all right then. See, again, kids, read the directions before you do stuff. All right then. So let's go back over to the other side where it's actually finished and we can put it on. And let's, let's correct our mistake from yesterday. So that's the side that I've got installed. We're gonna bring our light over here that's dying, even though it's doing the best it can to provide us with some extra light. This is the most dimly lit part of my garage. All right, you can see how much I bent that bracket out. Hopefully, uh, <clears throat> hopefully this is something that doesn't become an issue after I did that. So we're gonna need one of the spacers up on the top, one of the spacers on the bottom. Let's go ahead and bend this back. So that's where it was originally. Let's see if that matches up now that we've uh, now that we've got everything figured out. First things first. So we're gonna take our spacer, feed it through on the back side. Oh, we need a wa. No, we don't need a washer. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, while we're here. Let's go ahead and add the second bottom screw. And we'll put the spacer there as well. This one here is, because the uh, the extra metal that I showed you guys, this one here is kind of a pain. But, there it is. So this one here is meant to actually be springy like that. And the reason why is that not everybody's all line up the same. You can see, you know, once, once it gets in there, Okay, it'll start to get flush. Let's go ahead and start tightening up these ones first and just get them as close in there as we can. Yesterday's install was not, <laughs> was not good. See this, with the spacers in there, this actually allows you to get it nice and tight, which is something I was having a problem with yesterday. I was worried about it rattled off. I was gonna use blue Loctite on it, but now that I'm really seeing how tight it can get, with the spacers in there. There you go. I'm not sure that I like the lip here and the fact that yes, it looks like it should move up. So maybe the bracket does need to come up slightly. Damn it. Yeah, it, it does. The bracket needs to come upward. We can just loosen that a little bit. We need the bracket up the best we can. While the bracket's up. Tighten it. Let me just hope that that was enough. Ta-da! The other side will look just the same once we get it done tomorrow. But that's how you bend that bracket into place. That's how you install the, I don't know, quarter panel, I guess? Mini panel? Eighth panel? Side of the rear... I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. These brackets, you know, I just need this screw here, which they're sending me, but I just need this one here, and then we can install it, and we're good to go. That was a, uh, that was quite an endeavor. Not gonna lie. It was, it was definitely more difficult than it needed to be, and that's partially on my part. So again, kids, this is a lesson, and normally YouTubers are like, I'm not going to show where I screwed up. Nah, not me. I screwed up. I, uh, I definitely, ooh, I definitely didn't read all of the directions like I should have. <laughs> I looked and I went, this isn't an Ikea part. Why do I have extra parts left? That doesn't make any sense. That was the little spacers right there.
They were the extra parts. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps anybody who may have a little bit of trouble getting theirs installed. I haven't seen any instructional videos about this at all. Now we have one, kinda. We have one where I, uh, I did most of it and then got frustrated and then we have the one where I calmed down, figured it out and made it work. This is real life, folks. This is how things actually happen. Not like most people's tutorials where it's just like, oh, here's how to do it flawlessly. I didn't have any hiccups. BS, man. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. I know it's kind of a long one. Might be long. I'm not sure. We'll find out when I edit. Peace.